Welcome to Eureka Fest and also our Lumelson MIT Student Prize Award Ceremony. I'm Stephanie Couch, the Executive Director of the Lumelson MIT program. And this is my very first Eureka Fest. And I thought I knew what was going to happen and that it was going to be a great event, but let me tell you, I'm blown away by all the wonderful work I've seen uh, from all of you students, teachers. Um, it's really been an incredible experience. And so um, I'm glad we're all here to, to celebrate the wonderful work that's been done all year. There are a lot of people who contribute to making this work uh, successful. And so I want to just give you... Um, the names of a few of the folks who have helped out. And I ask that you raise your hands so we know who you are when I, uh, when I uh, call your name. First of all, none of this would be possible without the Limelson Foundation. They're uh, based in Portland, Oregon. A number of them have flown all the way here to be with us. And so if you could please raise your hand if you're with the Limelson Foundation, we want to give you a big applause. We have a fantastic staff team at the Limelson MIT program. Uh, everyone contributes all year long uh, in different ways and then also to this event. Uh, we're too big to call everybody's name, but I ask that our staff please, um, why don't you stand up? I want everybody to see who you are. The Limelson MIT staff who make this possible. Uh, we have an extended staff that a lot of times um, don't get a lot of recognition, but we couldn't do this work without them, and that's the master teachers who are distributed across the United States and support our invent team's work. Can the master teachers, can you please stand up? What about our screeners and judges? Do we have any of our screeners and judges in the room? If so, can you please raise your hand? Screeners and judges, are you here? We have a number, and I've seen some of them around, but they might not be in the room yet. Thank you. Let's give our screeners and judges a hand. We have a really special guest. Some of you met her earlier, but not everybody was here in the room. Uh, Joyce Ward, are you here yet? Can you stand up, please, Joyce? <clears throat> Joyce Ward is with the U.S. Patent and Trade Office and a big champion of the work that we do, and we are really grateful she made the trip to be here today. Also, we have um, the parents that have supported all of you, student invent teams and teachers, and just if you could raise your hands, we want to thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, you know, open-ended inventing, you never know what's going to come along. Uh, it requires um, a lot of technical expertise and knowledge that sometimes is not present in a local community. And so we have to call up people and say, do you think you could help such and such team? And so we have some folks here today. If you could just stand up, if you were a mentor that helped bring technical expertise to the students, could you please stand? So as you can see, uh, inventing is a team sport, and uh, I'm learning all about inventing from our fantastic, incredible faculty director, Dr. Michael Sima, who is an inventor himself, and he's also professor of material science and engineering here at MIT, and I'm very pleased to turn the mic over to Michael. Oh, okay, thank you. Thanks. Welcome to MIT. Uh, I'm actually a scientist, an engineer, and an inventor. Um, you know, these jobs are similar, but are not, not exactly the same. 
Um, and what's the difference? Because you know, I, t I work with freshmen here at MIT, and they, they often want to know what's the difference. Um, so science, great science anyways, expands the boundaries between what you know and what you don't know. That's its job. And great engineering expands the boundaries between what's possible and what's impossible. Uh, but what's inventing? What is an invention? Well, it's similar to engineering, except that it pushes boundaries you didn't know existed. And I, preparing for tonight, I was trying to think of what's, what's the best example of that, and it didn't take me long to think of just one, and there are many of these. Uh, prior to 1985, if you wanted a, a significant amount of DNA to study, uh, you had to clone it, uh, which involves, in those days, uh, inside, a, inside of the cell of a bacteria, bacterial cell inside a living organism. And all the research in those days was devoted to making that process very much more efficient because it wasn't very efficient. But then the discovery of what's called PCR changed all that. What people were doing was they took a molecular machine, literally a molecular micro machine, polymerase, and uh, decided they were going to abandon doing it in a cell. They went in a completely different direction than the whole rest of the world. That's what invention is. It's pushing a boundary that nobody ever knew existed. Finally, before I introduce the next speaker, I want to share with you some thoughts uh, of a colleague of mine, uh, Dr. Uh, Luis Perez Breva, who teaches here at MIT. And he just published a book, I mentioned this to some of the teachers yesterday, called Innovating, A Doer's Manifesto. It's a very readable book. In fact, my son is going into the ninth grade. I, I gave him this book yesterday because when I read it, I realized uh, that's what I do as an inventor. I, I mean, I, I knew everything he was saying. I'd never seen it written down before, but there it was. And there were a couple of ideas that I thought I'd share with you, and you probably ran into these in your projects. Get comfortable with the idea that inventions are derived from parts that are just laying around. Many of the people, young people I work with and say, how could that be an invention? I just took the parts from around the lab. Well, all inventions are like that. They are built with parts that are just lying around. The other part that uh, Luis talks about is uh, resources. There's two ways to solve a problem. You can spend a lot of time getting the resources to build the best gizmo, and resources being money, talent, people, all that sort of thing. Uh, and often that becomes a very long process in itself before you tried it, tried out the idea. What Luis says is, or you can change the problem and bring the problem to the resources that you have. And you probably did a lot of that in your projects. That is a very important part of invention. And then finally, what Luis sh shares, in fact, I, I was waiting for an Uber last week and I ran into him and he, he he said, I mentioned uh, uh, that I, I really enjoyed his book, and he, said, and he said, you know, the biggest thing I share with students is get started. Um, it's, so, prototyping is about getting started early. It doesn't have to be perfect, but getting it going. And, uh, and so, you know, I hope you, do, I hope you do find a copy of this book, because I think you'll, you'll find yourself that you saw uh, a lot of what he's saying in your projects that you spent the year on. So today we're lucky enough to be joined by our, um, our colleague from the Lemelson Foundation, David Coronado. He's our, what we call our program officer. He's really our, our mentor at the foundation that, uh, that uh, helps us along in our decisions with uh, regard to the program that we do here. And uh, 
We're grateful that he's here, that he's come all this way. Let me tell you a little bit about him. Uh, as I mentioned, he's a program officer. David joined the foundation, the Lemelson Foundation, in 2015. And his main job there is uh, working to support student growth by promoting equal access to invention education. So he's really centered on education in the foundation, which is a big part of their mission. He's passionate about breaking the cycle of poverty that prevents many young people from succeeding and providing alternative pathways that involve inspiration, education, and graduation, of course, which is important. Before joining the Lemelson Foundation, he was at Mesa, right? Uh, David spent over a decade as executive director of the Oregon Mesa program. That's mathematics, engineering, and, and science achievement. Uh, it's, uh, and that program was centered at uh, Portland State uh, University. Uh, he served as president of Mesa USA, the Mesa USA organization in integrated invention education as part as an approach that has now been utilized across the Mesa program nationally. In addition, David served as an academic coordinator at Harvey Mudd College Math Science and Center, which is a great school, and uh, if you're a chemist, that's a really great school, and as uh, president of Oregon College Access Network. And he's also a father, and a dedicated father, and he loves photography. We've just spent the past few days talking about photography. So David, come on up. <laughs> Wow, how's everyone doing? Well, it has a truly a pleasure to be here on behalf of the Lemelson Foundation. Unfortunately, Rob Lemelson wasn't able to attend the event today, but he certainly sends his congratulations to all. Rob Lemelson is one of the children of Dorothy and Jerry Lemelson, in which you get to see some of his uh, wonderful patents here today. So you may be wondering about, you know, why does the foundation care about invention? Well, I've kind of alluded. Jerry Lummelson, we call him affectionately, his name is Jerome Lummelson, he had over 600 patents to his name. So he was inventing up to the, pretty much to the very end of his life. So think about it. He literally created one patent a month for over 40 years. Now think about the patent that you hope to get to, right? It's almost a year. So he was amazing. He literally walked around seeing the world around him in a different way. He would see problems no matter where he went, and he would always look to try and find a solution. He truly was passionate purely around invention. So Jerry and Dolly knew the power in invention, so they invested and created the Lemelson Foundation. They launched the foundation because they really wanted to make sure that everyone understood the importance of invention, but also realized that every person, every young person, every young adult like yourself, could really understand the value that invention has, that it has the ability to transform and improve the lives of others. And we certainly have seen some of the projects here today really thinking about how can you improve the world around you and truly the vision that we see here and the activities that we see here from everyone is the epitome of what the Limelson Foundation was trying to accomplish. We know this work would not be possible of really hard workers behind the scenes. And the Lemelson MIT program deserves lots of gratitude. We get to provide the funding, and they get to do the hard work of every day of ensuring that this program is successful. Thanks to the leadership of Dr. Michael Seema and Stephanie Couch and to all the staff of the Lemelson MIT program, this is what you guys get to experience. And hundreds and thousands of students across the US have experienced this, and they're making an impact. They're in schools across the country, and we hope that you will join them in their ranks. So in the end, so I wanted to take a quick second to just talk about, you know, what can you do with inventing? So kind of already talked a little bit about, now more than ever, we really need inventors who really think about the world in a different way. There are a number of opportunities around inventing. Some will make you some quick cash overnight but you have to really think about it. Is it really going to improve the lives of others? Is it really going to improve the world? And as you think about that, we can encourage you to think about how will they transform, how will your invention transform the planet for the better? Issues like climate change, water pollution, water quality, 
access to energy, those are all things that we're facing, food shortage. And we think about typically these problems are abroad, but these are actually problems that are active in the US. And we need inventors like you to go out and solve those big problems. So as you think about inventing, really think about those big problems that you can solve. Fortunately, generations prior to you have created some problems, and you'll probably create some of your own. But we hope that you'll think about how you can solve those problems. It is for this reason that the foundation focused on what we call impact inventing. So it's the concept of, think about it, there's three tenets of impact inventing. One, invent to improve the lives of others. The second one is to think about just because it's improving someone's lives doesn't mean that it doesn't have financial sustainability, that it doesn't, it's a product in the market that does make money. And the, set, the third thing is to really think about how you invent. So the things you invent will eventually end up back into the environment at some point. So think about the entire life cycle of that product. When it's done, what's gonna happen to it? Is it gonna be in a landfill? Is it gonna be recycled? So think about not just the problem you're solving for, but how are you solving the problem from beginning to end. So I hope to turn a little bit to the high school students a little bit. As uh, Dr. Seema mentioned, I've been working in education for many years, and it's truly an area of passion for me. So as I think about it, I was a first-generation low-income student growing up. And I love to tell my story because a lot of times people like you, young people like you, think about, I can never be that person. Look at, these, look at these ladies and gentlemen over here. I can never be like them. But I want you to stop and think about it for a second and look around. Everyone take a look around you. These are the folks who are really going to change the world. And think about it. You're at MIT. You are an institution that has transformed the world. And you are in great company. You're a great company amongst inventors. So I want you to kind of relish this moment. I know sometimes when I would get provided to... I was brought to different programs like this with funding of other foundations and things, but I never really understood where I was. So I want you to take a moment to really sink it in, that this is where you are, and use that as fuel as you move forward to think about when someone says you can't do something, use it as fuel to say, I've done something, and I'm going to do more. So as you think about becoming an inventor, let's be honest, inventing isn't easy. You already know this. You've experienced it. I know that uh, there were probably some tears. I know that there were some tense moments between team members. We saw people raise a hand in another uh, presentation of people, you know, personalities rubbing, right? You probably also, for high schoolers, you probably ate way too much pizza and junk food. <laughs> and you also probably thought about quitting as well. I'm sure it crossed your minds. Someone else can do that. But in the end, I would say you have done what some people would say is impossible. High school students inventing. I get to go around the country convincing people that, you can, that high school students can invent. So think about that. Have you thought of yourselves as an inventor? Raise your hand if you actually think you're an inventor. All right, we're going to change that. All Invent Team students, raise your hand. Are you an inventor? <laughs> you are an inventor. So I want you to internalize that because you are an inventor, and no one can take that away from you. You have been an inventor, and we hope you'll do more of it. So as you learn to become invent and you learn to become adults, realize you didn't do this by yourself. There's other people around you, your peers, others around you who are really supporting you. And this path isn't always easy, and it takes that support. And there's always some people who are around you who, who are going to be there no matter what, even though when they were frustrated with you. So I like to take their teachers, the Lemelson Invent Team advisors, who they have gone where no teacher has gone before. Let me tell you, recruiting a teacher to say, hey, you're going to do this for free. You're going to do it after school and you might be putting in about 150 hours. Not a lot of teachers would take that up. Not a lot of students, and you guys did. So if we could have the MIT, or the Lemelson MIT advisors from the Invent teams, please stand up.
as we talked from the panel earlier, as you move forward in your future, always remember them. Don't forget. It's always fun when you come back and see what you're doing. I had a student that have first in their family to go to school. I met them in sixth grade. They're graduating from a PhD program now. And so we love that. That keeps us fueling to take those 150-hour after-school programs and know it pays off, particularly in the end. So if you remember one thing today, I want you to remember to keep inventing, that you've already done it. It's easier. You know what to do the next time. And I hope you will actually use it as a life skill. It's not just a process to create something. It's actually a process you use in your life. And I can tell you in my life, there was a number of times, even all the way through adult and even through my career, people saying, you can't do that or you shouldn't be here. But I would say, take, take what invention provides you. It helps you see the problem and know that any solution is possible. And that's what invention provides you for your life skill. So I want to turn a minute to our prize winners here who tonight we get to celebrate their accomplishments. When I looked around and got to see your, your prizes and the, the projects, you truly are an inspiration to the young people as I've been able to see you interacting with them during the presentations already. But your inspiration really to our country about what inventors should be doing and what should they be solving for. So I want you to be proud of all the work that you've done to get to this point today. And I look forward to learning more of the foundation. You don't, get, you don't get disconnected from the foundation as well. The foundation hopes, in partnership with the Lumbleson MIT program, to help see you moving forward and to continue to put your products in the market where they're really going to have the most impact. So in accepting this prize, I do hope that there's a few things you'll actually go away with tonight. And that is, pay it forward. So I tell my experience because I want other people to realize that it can be done. So be ambassadors for invention. I hope you will share your successes, but even more importantly, share your failures. I know it wasn't easy getting to this point, and you probably as well, just like the high school students, realize that at some point you may have said, I'm moving on, I'm going to do something different. So show them that part, and also show them no matter where you come from, whether it's your race, your ethnicity, your gender, or how much money you came from, let them know that they can do it as well. I also want you to think about mentoring and nurturing the next generation of inventors. Maybe you met some young people in this room today to think about how your technology might actually influence those of others. So we continue to see this cycle of community around invention, and we continue to see solutions moving forward that truly will improve the lives of others and hopefully help save our planet in the process. So I hope you'll continue moving and inventing, and I hope that you will continue to put these products in the market where they will have impact. I want to congratu congratulate and thank all of you for your tremendous success of where you come and for your tremendous success in the future. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I am Janelle Semecki. I'm the awards program administrator for the Lemelson MIT program. Um, so my primary focus is managing our student prize. I actually just started at MIT in mid-February, so I've only been here a few months, but, and I think our student prize winners were selected maybe two weeks after I started. So for me, it's been such a pleasure getting to know them over the last few months and learning about their projects. Um, I am just, like everyone has said beforehand, I'm so inspired by them, how motivated they are and intelligent and talented. So I think you will soon witness this tonight with their presentations. I just wanted to give a brief um, background about the student prize. It's a national competition. We award it annually to graduate students and our undergraduate teams um, who have technology-based inventions in each of our four broad categories that you can see on the screen. So the four categories are Cure It, which is healthcare, uh, drive it, which is transportation, kind of more broadly, it could be anything that moves, essentially. Um, eat it, which is food, water, and agribusiness. Use it, which is consumer devices. So typically, we award one graduate prize and one undergraduate team prize in each category. Um, this year, we had such a strong pool of finalists that our judges came to a complete tie with our curate, cat the curate graduates. So we actually have two graduate curate winners this year in addition to the undergraduate team. Um, so on your programs, 
you can see the list of all our winners. They, this, they're listed in the order that they'll be presenting tonight. So just so you know, once we get going, they're gonna go straight through. Uh, the presenters will introduce themselves or their team. They each have 10 minutes, so if they finish in under that time, they're gonna take questions from the audience, so start thinking about that. We'll have people who run microphones up to you if you do have a question. Uh, I think that's about it. Soon after this, once the presentations are over, then we will do our award ceremony. So, to kick things off tonight, our first presenter is Tony Tao. <laughs> 